A fashion designer's impact goes beyond the runway. They change the way we look at ourselves and those around us. Video fashion designers chronicles their past successes and follows their evolution into the 21st century. There'll always be fun at McDonald's, you know, there's not, there'll, it'll never be that serious, no matter how much I try. You know, that's in my nature, that's what I like. London's king of bling, Julian McDonald, initially found fame as a knitwear designer. His cobweb-like creations caught the eye of Karl Lagerfeld, who hired him to spin his gossamer fine fantasies for the Chanel and Lagerfeld collections from 1996 to 1998. Uh, an achievement and a privilege which I very much owe to Carl for letting me work with him and on the Chanel and Larkfell collections. McDonald launched his namesake line in 1997 and his work has expanded beyond just knits. He has instilled a sense of high octane glamour into London Fashion Week. I think he brings to British fashion a complete in modesty, you can never have a skirt that's too short or a heel too high or a cleavage too deep or the hair can never be too big or the jewelry too massive. And we need exuberant spirits like Julie McDonald just to sort of say, hey, anything goes. In 2001, to the surprise of many, he was appointed chief designer at Givenchy in Paris and remained at the house until 2004. But all the while, he has continued to craft his signature brand of glitz in London. They're expensive clothes, they're glamorous, they're sexy, and they're not for everybody, they're for the lucky people in the world. And if you're not one of those lucky people, then hey, go to the thrift shop, buy a couple of sequins, buy a couple of beads, get a couple of brooches, and jazz it up. It's very exciting and you know it's a um, very special time for me because I've worked on so many other shows before but this time you know it's about me, Julian McDonald. After years of crafting show-stopping knitwear for Karl Lagerfeld, Julian McDonald staged his first solo runway show in spring 1998. I thought it was beautiful, really exquisite and I think it showed, you know it's his first show. And I think, um, you know, the craftsmanship was there, the beauty was there, the elegance. I think it's so womanly and so sexy and so just everything that's new is what Julian designs is and it's lovely, it really is. It's kind of like very fresh and it's just brilliant. You look at these clothes and you know, yes. Yes, result. It is it's so exciting. The collection has been made by uh, Miss Diana. Who's over there? Miss Diana! Come over. Come <laughs> back. And it's also been made sponsored by Lola Capini. Lola? Lola. Lola. <laughs> So between the three of us, we have made the collection this which you see tonight. Diana has manufactured it, and Lola Capini from Linear Poo Spa has actually made the threads. How would we describe it? Uh, young, yeah. sexy, yeah. modern, feminine, and very technical. It's not just about Julia McDonald, it's about a big team of people which have, has helped make this collection and a dream come true for me. For winter 2001, Julian McDonald went center stage at the Millennium Dome in Greenwich, England. His celebrity friends came in force with appearances by Baby Spice, Kate Moss, and Naomi Campbell, to name just a few. We all bored of the 90s and the millennium. Let's say it's about colour and about having fun and being avant-garde. 
rehearsals went into full swing as models prepared to dance down the runway. McDonald hired famed rap video director Hype Williams to direct his show. A massive video screen played some of the year's hottest music videos, along with high-tech visual media selected by Williams. Then, live performances by rap star Jay-Z and the sexy Gwen Stefani of No Doubt brought the audience to their feet for this final show of London Fashion Week. Julian McDonald is brilliant. Um, he makes really sexy clothes, really good sort of party clothes almost, some of them. I had a really great leather jacket this season that I really like. Yeah, this show is always a really good event. show something about colour and sheen and shine and how I like clothes which have a lot of sparkle and a lot of character about it. Outfitted in McDonald, Gwen Stefani closed the show with an energised performance. I just wanted women to feel sexy, be bright and be strong. You're going to see a, a very kind of 70s disco inspiration, a little Studio 54 happening tonight so it'll be fun it's kind of the appropriate venue and the vibe of everything so it's great yeah it's 1940s meet studio 54 it's a very glamorous collection for very very glamorous women he likes girls to have fun and be sexy and go out and have a laugh and uh, that sort of comes through in his show and in the clothes. Um, the clothes are sort of always sexy and sort of quite fabulous and, you know he doesn't hold back. He likes his women to really go all out there and look absolutely sort of very fabulous. Yeah you know, a Julia McDonald woman is a woman who enters the room and people just go wow what have you got on? You don't go to a party not to be noticed you don't spend hours in the beauty salon having your head and your makeup, your nails. You want to go somewhere and look fantastic. And my clothes enable a woman to look great. It's been amazing. It's been really fun. I haven't really seen the light of day this week, but uh, it's just been locked down Julian McDonald. So it's been, it's been fun. Rachel Zoe has been a huge inspiration for the collection. She is the most prestigious celebrity stylist at the moment. I'm sure you could see the influence of Rachel on the catwalk. And I hope that if you are a woman and you watch in the collection, you think, wow, I would love to look like that. Hollywood icons like Marilyn Monroe, like Dita Von Teese, like Rachel Zoe, and I use those inspiration 
to translate into my clothes. I don't design clothes unless they're sexy, glamorous, and they enhance the body. I hate baggy clothes, I hate loose things. I think everything should make a woman feel like a woman and look like a woman in the silhouette. Surrounded by divas past and present, the brash Brit Julian McDonald pontificated beyond modesty. If you want to look good, you've got to work hard. And if you want to be rich, you've got to be a bitch. McDonald added his hyper-real vision to the Olympics, giving a whole new meaning to the term sportswear. It's like all about having fun, being athletic, and it's a sporty, glamorous, chore Julian McDonald. Fashion designers you to make direction. I mean, the direction for next summer is short and sexy. Everybody is obsessed with their body, about being young, spending time in the gym. And you know what, if you want to wear my clothes, you've got to look great. I think um, I have, need to lose a couple of pounds before I can get into any of those clothes. I thought it was great. It's my first Julie, um, Julie McDonald show, so, you know, I was kind of um, wondering what to expect, but it was good. My friend Julian makes my stage gown. What can I say? You, you'd kill me if I said anything bad. Great, no, great, great, great. I thought the show was great. I think Julian's, uh, you know, he's really like a fashion icon, especially here in London. I thought the clothes were a totally different look, but, you know, and um, they were fun and edgy and cool and sexy. And Women who've got money want to look great and, you know, great bodies, athletic and sexy. Just get them a fashion designer. I'm not going to show you somebody fat. I'm going to show you what you want to be. You've got to be good. You've got to look sexy. Do you know what? Would you ever go on the beach in a bikini if you didn't look good? And I'm saying no. Work it. You know, I'm 36, I'd love to be 26. But I spend my life looking younger, trying to make myself look better, and so should everybody else. Basically, no, it's after the last show I did Biker. How do you follow on for the Biker, the current trends? Designers look for a new trend. Basically, my new trend was scuba. I went diving to show my shape. All of a sudden, I put this wetsuit on. It contoured my body, made me feel amazed. But if I feel amazed, and I'm sure this is what women want to feel like. Julian had, had sort of been slightly in the wilderness since he since he left um, Givenchy a while, a while ago and had, um, had gone into sort of really high glitz and um, over, the, over theatrical productions and I think he's really, really pulled back from that and, and concentrated now on his, um, his skills which he learned um, at the time when he had a couture atelier at his uh, disposal. I was interested to see, I suppose, seeing this very sort of strong silhouette of the strong shoulders and um, everything sort of body conscious, that silhouette sells extremely well. Talking to my friends who are other retailers, especially in London, they were really excited about it. It was very cleaned up to me and very, very slick. I thought, I thought, yeah, there are a lot of people here in London who are, um, are really stepping up to the plate because there's a sort of competitive um, feel in the air because there's uh, there's a lot of people here and everyone's trying to show up their best and I think he really actually did. So it was all about underwater love, the love of a woman going underwater the sea by a love of very magical, mysterious colours.
The collection this season for Julian McDonnell is all about day and evening mixed together. It's based on an erotic novel by Jilly Cooper called Riders. And it's all about a group of very equestrian English women that go riding by day, but by night they play naughty games with men. Well, I couldn't say too much on TV, but basically they have sexual endeavours with stable boys. I like the idea that it was um, a group of women who lived in the English countryside. By day they rode, um, they wore almost men's clothes, riding clothes, and then by night they just wore negligees. Then over the negligee they'd wear um, tailored jackets. So it's the combination of something very feminine and English tailoring mixed together to create something very new and very exciting in fashion. Colour palette's very neutral, so basically there's lots of navy, navy is the new black, little bits of chalk, lots of knit, lots of textures, and then lots of flesh mixed with a very unusual lace. The lace was specially designed by myself, so it's quite spooky. They're very special things. I think it'll kind of make you look and think, my God, what is that made from? What is that? What's the motif? The tailored fabrics all come from, uh, from traditional English Savile Row tailoring. So lots of checks, lots of like plain wools mixed together. So the tailor is actually quite hard, quite modern, quite traditional. The cut of the jackets are very chic, very elegant and very feminine and they look very, very expensive. I think it is feminine, exciting and fun. The evening wear is inspired by negligee, so it's things which are very feminine, very light. I think things you might even wear in the summer and not in a winter collection. Lots of soft draping, lots of pleating, lots of chiffon, lots of lace. Very soft things mixed with hard tailoring, but it makes something look very erotic, very sensual and very, very feminine. I have worn his clothes. I think that he's a very talented English designer and I think at this moment we need to support English designers. Definitely, you know, Julian McDonald this season went to China and Japan. We started off the collection very modern. I was inspired by the super yachts you see in the ocean. Then the yachts sail across the ocean, across the world, to a faraway Asian sky. So it was China, Japanese. Very traditional Japanese prints of the sea. Blue and white graphic prints inspired by dragons and fish jumping from the sky. Very modern, very new. I thought it's beautiful and sexy and it's great to see him being successful and doing such a great clothes. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. The sheer dresses with all the detail and jewels and there was an eagle on the back of one. It was, I, I've never seen anything like it. Very luxurious, good show embroidery inspired by a tattooed man. Tattoos that wrap around Japanese bodies. I've taken the embroidery from a man and wrapped it around a beautiful woman of luxury couture and glamour.
The embroidery is a labour of love. You know, stack sequins, metal sequins, cut leather, luxury beyond imagination. I'm so excited to be back. I never really went anywhere, but you know what? I'm back and I'm back with a big golden sparkling bag. The Las Vegas woman is any woman who goes on holidays with her friends. It's a little bit like sex in this city. That gang of girls all go into Las Vegas for a weekend. You take your best clothes, you dress up, you want to meet millions of men and you want to have a good time. I went on holidays there last year. I had an amazing time. I went to every single nightclub. I went to every hotel. I saw it. I loved it. I said, this is my kind of woman. A woman that goes somewhere, dresses up and parties all night. These are clothes for any woman who wants to be glamorous and sexy and wants to be special, who wants to stand out in a room. It was amazing, loads of amazing dresses. The gold ones with all the cut out kind of mesh bits, the really short ones as well. Um, I love the yellow dress. There was loads that I loved. Incredible, yeah, really inspiring. Oh my goodness, just so many sequins. What, you know, what girls don't love sequins? Beautiful, really lovely. We were blown away, weren't we? Away. It's definitely been my favorite show so far. It was like a proper show. Nice. And we definitely looked at loads of outfits and thought we would, you know, love to wear them. The red bodysuit, wasn't there, with all like tassels hanging off, and we were like, that would be great on tour. I think the bodysuit is the new dress for me. At the end of the day, not all women want to wear dresses. Some women really hate their legs. Like, oh, no, I don't want to wear a dress. And I think a bodysuit liberates a woman and makes her just as sexy, but in a different way. It's a very kind of a cool, rock and roll attitude. I find it challenging every day. I never went to bed last night. I was beading, sequining, even tying the shoelaces before the models went on. It never stopped. It's like a roller coaster that goes on and on and on.